tis true replied d'artagnan yet the great sometimes repent of their ingratitude in that case it would be quite another thing come let's be merciful to every sinner besides you are right in another respect which is in thinking that if we were to meddle in politics there could not be a better time than the present how can you know that you who never interest yourself in politics ah without caring about them myself i live among those who are much occupied in them poet as i am i am intimate with sarrazine who is devoted to the prince de conti and with monsieur de bois robert who since the death of cardinal richelieu is of all parties or any party so that political discussions have not altogether been uninteresting to me i have no doubt of it said d'artagnan now my dear friend look upon all i tell you as merely the statement of a monk of a man i understand that mazarin is at this very moment extremely uneasy as to the state of affairs that his orders are not respected like those of our former bubber the deceased cardinal whose portrait as you see hangs yonder for whatever may be thought of him it must be allowed that richelieu was great i will not contradict you there said d'artagnan my first impressions were favorable to the minister i said to myself that a minister is never loved but that with the genius this one was said to have he would eventually triumph over his enemies and would make himself feared which in my opinion is much more to be desired than to be loved d'artagnan made a sign with his head which indicated that he entirely approved that doubtful maxim this then continued aramis was my first opinion but as i am very ignorant in matters of this kind and as the humility which i profess obliges me not to rest on my own judgment but to ask the opinion of others i have inquired it my friend aramis paused well what asked his friend well i must mortify myself i must confess that i was mistaken monsieur de mazarin is not a man of genius as i thought he is a man of no origin once a servant of cardinal bentivoglio and he got on by intrigue he is an upstart a man of no name who will only be the tool of a party in france he will amass wealth he will injure the king's revenue and pay to himself the pensions which richelieu paid to others he is neither a gentleman in manner nor in feeling but a sort of buffoon a punchinello a pantaloon do you know him i do not m said d'artagnan there is some truth in what you say ah it fills me with pride to find that thanks to a common sort of penetration with which i am endowed i am approved by a man like you fresh from the court but you speak of him not of his party his resources it is true the queen is for him something in his favor but he will never have the king a mere child a child who will be of age in four years then he has neither the parliament nor the people with him they represent the wealth of the country nor the nobles nor the princes who are the military power of france d'artagnan scratched his ear he was forced to confess to himself that this reasoning was not only comprehensive but just you see my poor friend that i am sometimes bereft of my ordinary thoughtfulness perhaps i am wrong in speaking thus to you who have evidently a leaning to mazarin i cried d'artagnan not in the least you spoke of a mission did i i was wrong then no i said what you say there is a crisis at hand well let's fly the feather before the wind let us join with that side to which the wind will carry it and resume our adventurous life we were once four valiant knights four hearts fondly united let us unite again not our hearts which have never been severed but our courage and our fortunes here's a good opportunity for getting something better than a diamond you are right d'artagnan i held a similar project but as i had not nor ever shall have your fruitful vigorous imagination the idea was suggested to me every one nowadays wants auxiliaries propositions have been made to me and i confess to you frankly that the co-tutor has made me speak out monsieur de gondi the cardinal's enemy 
no, the king's friend. Said Aramis, the king's friend, you understand. Well, it is a question of serving the king, the gentleman's duty. But the king is with Mazarin. He is, but not willingly in appearance, not heart, and that is exactly the snare the king's enemies are preparing for the poor child. Ah, but this is, indeed, civil war which you propose to me. Dear Aramis, war for the king. Yet the king will be at the head of the army on Mazarin's side, but his heart will be in the army commanded by the Duc de Beaufort.